Okay, this thing is freaking sweet. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. Today we're going to look at something really cool. So a couple months ago, Radioddity contacted me and asked if I would be interested in reviewing some of their stuff. So of course I said yes. They sent me the Zygu GSOC. This is like a pan adapter. This is like a pan adapter on steroids for uh, the G90. It's, it's this head unit that, uh, oh, it, <laughs> It's just really cool. So uh, they sent this to me on loan. I do have to send it back to them. So let's dive into this thing. I am really curious to see what's going on with this baby. I have a link in the description for Radioddity as well as a link where you can click and get $15 off your purchase at Radioddity. So it comes a typical Zygu boxing, I guess you could say. A little manual there, uh, whatever that is. But look at this thing, huh? This thing is sweet. That's the head unit itself. We'll look at that in a second, and then let's see what else do we have. We got a cable for connecting the, the unit to the radio. Looks like we've got a power cable and a uh, TRS cable for something. So this is just a review unit, and I have to send it back, but they didn't say I couldn't take the plastic off. So let's take a look at this thing. This is freaking gorgeous. First thing, we've got a, a beautiful seven inch touch screen. I'm surprised at how nice this thing is. Uh, looks like we've got our bandwidth knobs here. There's an inner and an outer. They also push in. Uh, we've got our volume, AGC, and then the squelch. Uh, we've got a few buttons here that the manual kind of doesn't really say what they are, but um, this is for your power. If you long press these buttons, they're all multifunctions. So you can long press them and it'll do things. This will turn your tuner on, long press it, it'll tune it. And then you've got three user defined uh, buttons here. Here we have our power and our lock button. Nice knob, nice kind of free, smooth feel to it. The little finger button here also moves inside of it, so that's nice. So taking a look at the right side of the radio, we have our IF connection. We've got our RJ45 port for your microphone, and we have our DC power in. On the left side of the radio, we've got two USB ports and we've got a slot for a micro SD card. And then on the back, we have a nice little speaker here. Here's where we're gonna connect the GSOC to the body of the G90. We've got a speaker or a headphone out and then our IQ out. And it also has a nice little bail so you can stand it up. That's, that's nice, they, they did a good job with this so far. So hooking this up is ridiculously easy. We're gonna take uh, just three wires is all it takes. That's like the control cable. Then we take our TRS, goes into the IQ, and then our power goes in the power. And we're ready to turn this thing on. So let's take a look at this. I've only been playing with this for a few minutes and it's, it's pretty intuitive. <laughs> I plugged in a mouse. Look at this, this is so cool. So it is touchscreen, so like just at the top left, you've got VFO A, and if you touch that, you go to VFO B. Uh, here we've got our mode, so we can touch the LSB there, and then we can choose from our different modes, or we can do it with a mouse. That is, that is just too cool. Look at that. I love that. By clicking or touching on the megahertz is going to bring up kind of our band stacking selector, they're calling it. So you can choose between, you know, whatever bands you want there. Neat. You've got your attenuator, preamp, okay. And we'll leave that off. Your AGC, you can do this on the main screen as well. We'll just leave this on auto. You can do split function, VFO memory, memory editor. So this is where we can go in and probably save memories of different frequencies and things that, that we want to use. Then we have our tuning steps. You can select how fine a tuning you want. Go really fast, go really slow. Here we've got our power meter, SWR and ALC all right in front of you. I like that. I like being able to see all of this stuff. Let's see what these buttons do. Okay, so if we click this little F button, this is our receive incremental tuning. 
What if we long press it? Transmit incremental tuning, I guess that would be. So if we touch the power button, here we can just easily adjust the power from 1 to 20 watts. And long pressing it, we can adjust our RF gain. Tuner button, obviously that engages the tuner, that doesn't tune it, but let's just... So pretty simple, tunes the radio. Uh, and then, I don't know how to actually set these yet, but we've got some user-defined functions or buttons to, you can see the different functions clicking on and off. Long pressing these doesn't seem to do anything. They just blink like that. And the manual isn't very helpful, so maybe we can figure it out. So then coming down here to where it says radio, if we click on that, this is where we can change the settings. Uh, it'll change this menu down here. So now we have our scope settings. So here we can adjust the span of the scope. So we're 25 kilohertz either side, 12, six, and then we're really wide at 100 kilohertz either side. I kind of like to keep it at 50. This level looks like we have three different tiers of just how strong it is, I suppose. I don't know. We'll leave it on the middle one. And then display, we can change the colors. I'm not going to do that. I'll just leave it the way it is. It looks pretty cool. So let's see. Let's click on modem here. Looks like we've got a decode. I think this is for... BPS K31 doesn't look like there's anything else in here. So we've got a receive equalizer so we can you know maybe get some more highs, scoop the mids a little bit, who you know, whatever, do whatever you want there. You can hit re this reset button to reset everything. Then we can click this TRX EQ swap. Now this is our transmit EQ. So you might need to have a buddy say, "Hey, you sound good or worse," but whatever. So that's cool. And then this button here, uh, this red or green, will actually toggle it on or off. What else do we have? DSP. So here's where we can control some of our functions. So great thing about this, one of my biggest complaints about the Zygu G90 is it doesn't have noise reduction. Let's listen. So here's noise reduction off. There's noise reduction on. That's pretty nice. And then we can go through in the previous and next things here. We can change how much of our reduction we want. I usually leave it on the lowest setting. That's usually pretty, uh, pretty good for me. We've got a noise blanker. A few different uh, settings for that. The width, the level, and on and off. Notch filter. Oh, I love me a notch filter. You get people keying up on you. This is really nice. I, I mean, just having these two functions is fantastic. So our notch filter we have either on or off. Looks like we can do, uh, we can center where we want to notch out and how wide our notch is. So that's very nice, very nice. We've got compression. That's always a good thing. Nothing to set there. It's just either on or off. And then we've got Vox which I don't personally use, but I know people that do. So that's very nice. This is really feature rich. And let's take a look at what's under system. So these are our settings for, I guess, anything you would want to set. So CW, QSK, on or off. We've got uh, tone frequency, tone volume, QSK time. Okay, keyer. Here, okay, here's where we can do our speed what kind of mode we're using, iambic, ratio, our mic gain, line in and out. This would be for like digital modes, I suppose. Your IF out, audio out, speaker or headphones, and backlight, okay. Oh wow, look at that. And it's nice that they have this default thing here too. So getting back to this DSP real quick, Notice all of these are grayed out uh, where the mouse is. That means nothing's on. So we have two options once we've configured it in this DSP. So let's, let's go look at noise reduction. So I want noise reduction on. Uh, we'll leave it at level five uh, and that's it. So there's nothing really much to do with noise reduction. So now you can see it's on. So we can really quickly just toggle on and off there.
yeah, that brings it down quite a bit. That sounds nice. But then we have our other settings, same thing. So let's say uh, notch filter is one I use a lot. So let's turn that on. I don't usually have the notch filter on all the time, but if I'm running a pile up uh, and you get some jack wagon that thinks it's a good idea to key up on you, um, I'll definitely turn it on. So we can set this uh, for, I don't know, whatever, whatever frequency we're going to set it on. You kind of have to do that when you're out there, but um, with, oh, let's just make this all default. Who cares? Okay. So now our notch filter's on, so we can exit out of here. These are the two that I use most. Wouldn't hurt to have compression on. You, this is neat. You can just do all of this with the touch of a button. It's a little wonky. They're a little bit small, and I find that you kind of have to touch a little bit over the button because the mouse, see where the mouse pointer is? It follows you everywhere. So that's kind of one thing, like, it, if you don't have a mouse plugged in, I don't think there should be a little mouse pointer there. But, being that it's touch screen, so there's a big signal, we can just touch on the screen and bring them close in. This is really nice, guys. This screen is really, it's not like a super high resolution screen, it's not like an iPad or something, but it is, it's like a... It's like a tablet screen. I mean, you can kind of see the pixels. It's not super, super high res, but it, it really looks nice. I am liking this thing. So let's see what else do we have. So we've got a, looks like a clock up here and I <laughs> you click on that. You get a calendar. That's pretty sweet. We have here. So here's our time, I guess. Hour, minute, second. What time is it here? Yeah, it's 3.22. I don't know if this is like Zulu time or what though. I don't know. Oh look, so now we have our time. I wonder if that is 24 hour time. That would be very nice if it is. Hey, it is, fantastic. Okay, so it's actually 1922. So that's cool. So when you're logging your contacts, you just look at your radio and you know what time it is in Zulu time. Looking on voltage doesn't do anything. Um, this is cool. What is this button? Okay. That's definitely not 1970. Today's definitely not Wednesday, though. Although it's not January, either. It's October 30th today. So that's neat. Anyone wanting to send me a birthday present? That's my birthday. Totally have no idea what you'd use a calendar for on a radio, but... Right-clicking on these doesn't do anything either, but that's a neat function. Like, hmm, I wonder what day it is. Oh, and this is not the current day either. I wonder, maybe you have to set it. I wonder if tomorrow I come back and it's on the 31st. Halloween. So if we press the power button, we get live. Man, I wonder how to set these, though. Another thing that I totally skipped over, uh, when you click on the megahertz, you bring up this band stack selector. In your modes, you've got CW lower, CW upper, AM. This also unlocks narrow FM. The, the G90 does FM, but not in its stock configuration. You've got to have this external GSOC to actually get on FM, so you can hit some 10 meter repeaters and stuff. So that's pretty neat. Let's see what other fun features we can do. So let's touch this. Okay, so here we can type in uh, a frequency and just go there and change our bands here. So let's take a look at this uh, EQ. It's got a pretty decent signal here. So I'm gonna click on this uh, transmit EQ and that's gonna bring up this menu. And we've got our on off toggle there turn up our highs that makes it sound a little better this is nice i like having an eq on here that's off It does help uh, 
really does help pull them out there and, and just clean up the audio. That's a really nice feature. I like that. That sounds nice. Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Delta. Hey, that's me. Roger the 58 and 4371. You are also 58 in Michigan. Thanks for the contact. Uh, Roger, thank you for the contact. Uh, I'm just there for 73. 73, Kate, I'm already. You got to make a POTA contact on your first contact with a new bit of kit. <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys, but this thing is freaking cool. Uh, still a couple things that I haven't figured out. I haven't figured out how to set the uh, user buttons, and I haven't figured out how to. Uh, do a voice memory, I think it does. Uh, I could be wrong. Like I said, the manual is not very good at all. In fact, uh, <laughs> some of the pages are right side up, some of the pages are upside down on mine. So a little attention to detail might be needed there. I would really like to see a more in-depth manual uh, because there aren't even like icons showing what buttons they're talking about in the manual. They're just like, oh, this does this and this does that. And it's like, well, what are those buttons? So. I uh, haven't figured out how to decode CW yet, uh, so I think there's a bit of uh, upgrades in the firmware that might be coming. But the cool thing about this is that this is kind of left open for expansion. So if Zygu makes more radios, uh, the idea is to have this be able to work with the others. For example, this is supposed to work with the X5105 as well. I don't have the cables to show that. You need the IF cable to hook it up, uh, and I don't have that, so I can't show it, but that's, I think, all you really need other than what we just set up today. So, uh, so far, I am very impressed with this. It's It feels like a nice quality bit of kit. It's it's a nice all-metal chassis. It's just really nice. It's going, I think, for $549. This is kind of like, if you think about it, uh, almost Elecraft like in kind of how everything they have is modular, the G90 has become such a popular radio, one for its price, uh, but two, because it really is a neat radio and uh, it's getting a lot of people excited about HF and HF portable. There's a lot of modifications that I've seen people doing with adding, you know, different 3D printed parts and things. Uh, it's just, it has this huge cult following. And this GSOC controller really, really <laughs> opens it up, so. You know, for the price of an Elecraft, if you're if you're comparing it to that, you're twelve hundred bucks just for a KX2. You want that pan adapter? I don't even know how expensive those are, but they ain't cheap. So you know, for probably about twelve hundred bucks, you could have the Zygu and this uh, and that little CE19 digital control. I mean, you'd have a whole freaking station. So I'm really impressed with this thing so far. My initial reaction when I took it out of the box, I just said, wow, I was not expecting it to be this big and nice. So I don't know how long I get to keep this, but I'm gonna play around with it for a while. I just wanted to make this video. I literally just got it today and I had to crack it open and see what it was and I wanted to share this with you guys. So there will be more videos of this coming. If I figure out how to get any more of those features, I'll probably make some separate standalones with it. Uh, if the weather uh, decides to be nice, it's, be Halloween tomorrow. Uh, it's kind of gray and gloomy here in Michigan, so hopefully I'll be able to get out and do uh, a Parks on the Air activation with it, run it through the OK at MRD Ringer, and uh, we'll see what else we can find with it. But man, for those Zygu G90 enthusiasts out there, this thing uh, might be something to look at. So check out the links in the description below to Radiodity. Again, there's a link uh, where you can get 15% off as well. And uh, thanks so much for watching another episode of K at MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.